You want a piece of us? <laughs> you got it. Welcome to the very first episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We are so excited that you guys are going to be part of our lives like this on this podcast level because for such a long time, people have been asking us, what the hell are you doing? So here we are, very first episode. I'm a little nervous. I just feel like I'm not going to be like as polished. You know, people like my husband like to say that I take too long to make a point, but that's not true at all. Yeah, you need a compass and a conversation. You are the Ferdinand Magellan of conversations. You circumnavigate the world without ever getting to your destination. So yeah. I probably get paid really well to do whatever it is that I do because um, yeah, we're celebrating nine seasons on a show. You guys probably know that we're from Shaws of Sunset on Bravo. I've only been on that show for five, but we've been together for seven years and- Not yet. <laughs> Yeah. It's not seven years You're yet. You're right. It just feels like eternity. We've been together for like five years. No, it will be seven years in August. Seven years since the first time you got the pickle in August. Oh my God. And you know it. Six years. Seven. But most of the things that go on in our life do not make that show. So this is really the story of our relationship from when we met to how we got here. We're going to retrace our steps and kind of fill in the blanks to some of the things in a relationship that you might not be privy to, you might not know about, but at the same point in time, if we told you about them, you probably laugh your ass off. For those of you who are into reality TV, what we do is basically record our lives over the course of months and then when it airs, it's a condensed version, obviously. Well, they can only cover so much. You know, everybody in the cast is going to get, you know, their, what's going on with them. And then, you know, a little bit of what's going on with their family. And you cut that all up. You air commercials. By the time you get down to it, it's really not that much. It's real condensed. You know, my wife's a cartoon character. So believe me when I tell you, living with her, there's a lot of things that, that go on on a day-to-day -day basis that just by sheer numbers, they it, it can never be on television. You know, they just don't have the time. There's so many things that I want to share with women, like the IVF journey. I want to talk about our wedding journey. Well, that's the point of the podcast is to talk about everything that you didn't see on the show. We're going to give you all the unapologetic, unfiltered stuff that comes from us every day. We think our lives are very interesting and fun. So, <clears throat> Tommy, how did we meet? Uh, we met on Tinder. Uh, we were on a banging app. What? <laughs> what? That wasn't, that, it wasn't a prayer group. We didn't meet at church. We didn't meet at the library. We met on an app that people were using at that time to fuck, to get together and slap uglies. Certain girls who shall remain nameless until I forget and it slips out were the ones that told me to download it. So that girl's, that those girls, who shall remain innocent and unnamed to protect the lives of the innocent because she has kids. Layla Garachi. <laughs> Layla. You can beep. Who is no stranger to the beep, pickle. Beep, Layla loves, beep, uh, beep, Layla loves to gallivant. Beep. Um, okay, fine. So maybe Tinder, is it still known as that? We need to figure out if Tinder is still the hot thing. I'm oblivious. But get back to, get back to this. When you saw my picture, what did you think? You had a really hot picture. You looked like, uh, I think it was Eva Mendez. You were looking in, in a mirror, but the picture was of the reflection of you looking in the mirror. Yeah. It was hot. You looked hot. Yeah. Um, that was probably the best picture of a selfie I've ever taken in my life. I don't think it was a selfie. It looked like someone took it. I took it. I don't think you did. First off, your arms aren't that long. First of all, it was in a mirror. Yeah, and no, second of I'm all, aware. it was a baby blue and mirror. You know, and it's the irony. I mean, listen, you're you're a beautiful broad, so you could take pictures or selfies. But the irony is that you in your ad had the same thing I had in my ad. Mine was that. It's not an ad, by what, the way. It? Profile. It, profile. Bio. See, it's how dated I am. I, and it, I, you whatever. sound like a Craigslist killer. Yeah, I did. I sound like I. My ad. Plus, I, I never did any of this. Like I, ne like, I never did any of that computer dating, like Match.com, all that. I never did none of that. The guy, this guy Paul at work told me about Tinder and like the way that he was telling me, dude, it was like it, he was inviting me into this fraternity and he was just so excited was he to good be looking? able to, to, oh yeah, I definitely he, would bang him. 
I don't know. Was he hot? Was he hot? No, he, no, he was tall. You know, I don't know. So you can't admit you're one of those guys that can't admit if somebody's. He wasn't my type. It looked like he would have really tore my ass to shreds. <laughs> to be honest with you, he was like six six, two fifty. So yeah, no, I'm, I'm gonna want him a little bit more dainty if I'm gonna go that way. Yeah, I can say whether or not his man is good looking. And he was telling me, and again, the excitement that he had, it was like he was sharing something with someone, and he was so thrilled to be able to pass on the knowledge that I I went home and started swiping, and I just couldn't believe it. And he, I put in my ad or a profile. After I had seen a bunch of these dudes, would they all had their shirts off taking pictures? Like to me, it was like that's the craziest, most banana thing that you could do to someone. Like so, I said in my profile something to the effect that you know, men who take topless photos should kill them selfies. And she had something to the effect of the same thing where. Guys that, you know, take uh, bathroom selfies should kill themselves. They think it was that close of a play on words. Our bios sounded ridiculously similar. You had three of the same pictures of yourself in a pair of Elvis glasses. You had a picture at a fashion show next to your friend, Jamie Sagenthal, God rest his soul. So you had one good picture, two bad pictures, and three repeat photos. No, you're only allowed three. At the time that you and I were on Tinder, you only allowed three. Okay, fine. And I know what pictures I had, and I looked like an Adonis in each and every one of them. No. I had a lush, full mane of hair. You had like a bucket like hat. Fabio or Samson from the Bible. You had like a Kangol hat in one of your pictures. Uh, no you way. Kangol hat. Have. Well, who, that might have been one of the other guys you were, you know, no. frolicking with from Tinder, but not me. I'm kidding. I know what three photos I had. I know what two of your three photos were. What? I can't think what the third one is off the top the of my head. The car wash? No, you were walking. It might have been the car wash. You were floating that thing around. No, it wasn't. You saw me on Tinder. You swiped because you liked what I looked like. I did like one of your pictures. I didn't like the other two, but the one picture was strong enough that... It made me interested in you. Especially with the combination of what was said in the profile. All right, so then we start to talk, and the talk on text was so hot, babe. And I don't mean it in a sexual way, because obviously you're not in... Like, you're not obviously, people don't know this about Tommy, but he will not do phone sex. That's so cheesy. It makes him uncomfortable if I even say that. It's cheesy. As Darth Vader would say, that's cheesy. So we definitely had to put our whole personality on the text at the time i had a day job and a buddy of mine and i were working on starting a business so i didn't have a lot of time more importantly i didn't have a lot of money you know everything was wrapped up in the business that's and what i, I liked about your profile is that you me. didn't pretend to do anything you said you have to be a pauper before you can be you, yeah you have to be a pauper before you can rule like a king i think is what i said something so it attracted me to you because you weren't pretending to be a baller or something you are not listen close if you're trying to figure out if a guy is full of shit and he's being honest on his profile that he's not a baller. That's what Tommy did, which made him stand out to me. Because these days, everyone is trying to pretend there's something they're not. Yeah, you have to live like a pauper before you're able to rule like a king, is what I said. Like, I didn't have money to go on dates and whatnot. It was just, it wasn't what it was about. Like I said, I had a day job, and then I was working on on a business when work was over. So anytime I had free time, which was, you know, maybe two hours a day, I would just go on Tinder and swipe. And, you know, if uh, if I matched up, I kind of shoot the shit with someone. But it never would lead to anything, and I knew it wouldn't. You know, it, don't get it twisted. If they were looking to hump, we would hump. Um, but I wasn't on there that long. Like, I found out about it in maybe June, and she and I got together in August. But When um, I met you, your phone had, like... Tons. Tina Tinder. Tons. Tammy Tinder. Tons. Paulina Tinder. But again, it was Papa just Papa conversation. It was Papa just Papa kind of shooting the shit. And it never really went anywhere. You were the only one person that it went somewhere. It was more than just the stupid... Because I had pocket lines that I would just send on Tinder. Like, you know, you tell her she's pretty. Thank you. Or don't thank me. Thank your parents. That type of shit. And chicks would eat that up. With you, it elevated to a level of realness that I can honestly say I've never had before anywhere else in my life. You know, especially when it came to women. Mm. You know, I could always throw out, I'm good with my mouth, so I could always throw out good pocket lines and stuff like that where, you know, Thank you. Thank it's real you. superficial. You know what I mean? There's not really anything that lays that's underneath it. So you're saying that 
you felt a sincere connection with me and all the rest of the girls were like, just for sex. I did not have Tinder sex, which is totally fine. I'm just trying to get to the point that our connection was really cool. You took it so slowly, though, that it annoyed me that you wouldn't ask to see me in person till we finally did. You know, that's why we met on a level that I've never experienced with anyone because I couldn't just shoot the shit because I, I had to be more honest with someone that I've never met before that you're trying to impress and not lose. But at the same point in time, you have to be, you know, I had to be real that we were, you know, I had a day job, I had a night job, I didn't have any fucking money. Were you actively thinking about that when you were talking to me? Of course, of course. I, I, she, she's obviously going to be want to ask to go on a date. She's obviously going to want to be, you know, wined and dined a little. Any woman would, you know what I mean? And I just was not in a position to do that. So I was able to get that across to her through the flirting and through the texting that elevated to the phone conversation. And I was able to do that over time. And uh, I'm grateful for that because, again, like if I tried to, you know, I mean, obviously at that time, if I wanted to, I could have took her out on a date. We could have went bang and, you know, then I would have ran like hit between him and like is that all the, the spare money I had for that week would have went on that date. You know what I mean? So I wouldn't be able to call her again. And like I could have done that, but I, it just... We connected so much that I, I didn't want to lose that with dishonesty. I felt that it was more important or it would pay off more in the long run for me just to be forthright. And if you are the person that I think you are because of the way that we're communicating and what you're saying and whatnot, then she'll accept it. And, you know, when we get to the mountaintop, she will we'll worry about it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm melting right now. Really? You're so romantic. Uh, you're a lucky lady. I don't know what to tell you. You should really, really, really be grateful. So I do really love that you put so much thought into it. And I think we had an unusually long period of courtship. Text. Yeah. Yes. The courtship was extremely long. You would have to have a lot of patience. You can't be a girl that wants to go out on a date this week and have been in that conversation with you, which took two months easily, that it was heavy daily conversation. But, but it was entertaining, too. It, wasn't it was simple. so entertaining. Yeah. I couldn't that you, would, you. You didn't mind it kind of, all right, so it's another week we're not going to see each other, but we're still talking every day, right? We're yes. still doing that, right? We're still talking every day. Then, yeah, we could deal with it. You know, don't sweat it. And then it came to a point in time where, I, I, you know, I could get where she was coming from. Forget the take me out to dinner and buy me a drink aspect of it. Just, is this guy for real? Even if everything he's told me is true and he's not what blah, blah, blah. He's got a business they're starting. And, you know, if all that's true, is he real? Because it, it got to a point that I was almost hiding. And yes. I don't want to feel like I was yeah, hiding. You, you know? definitely gave me the vibe that you were hiding and that you were intentionally delaying us meeting each other face to face and that got me a little conspicuous is that the right way to say it yes it made me like think what is he hiding he's definitely putting off the there were both adults and by now he should have asked to see me and i think we lived a few blocks away from each other finally i had to be the one to tell you that i wanted to stop by on my way home from dinner and yeah, that's you, the you, night you were out with the broads and you were craving the zoz each I was watching Friends. It was like 1130 at night. On a Monday. Yeah. And you was you were out there on the prowl looking for it. Um, well, because any anytime a girl goes to dinner at Chaconi's, first of all, Monday night is the night that members go and it was popping. So I had to get really nice and like well put together. And I was wearing the charcoal silk jumpsuit. Who's going to wear a dark charcoal silk jumpsuit with good hair and makeup and have like a couple drinks in. And not and want the pickle. My yeah. Uber was driving right past your house. So no, it wasn't. I know Fairfax where you Fairfax and Sunset. I mean, Do you not way. know where Chaconis is? Yeah. It's down on Melrose. Yeah. So you go up to Sunset. I guess you know, maybe you're right. You made a U-turn. I'm saying your car was like this when I came out. Oh, you're, uh, well, you're you can't see this. You're that technical that yeah, I was driving on your street. It was just on the left side of the street. Yeah, you made a U-turn for the pickle. You made oh a pickle God. turn. That's what they call that. We That's, didn't even have sex that night. Pickle turn, TM. I'm going to trademark that. Didn't have sex. What are you talking about? 
Well, yeah, no, I'm not that night because I maybe a quick counting midnight as not being that night, That's being right. a new day. The next yeah, day. After the, yeah, the next day, you was walking funny. That's so disrespectful. Yeah. No, it's You're going to talk about your no, son's not. mother that way? Yes, yes. I can't wait to sit him down on my knee when he gets older and say, well, the first night I met your mother, one, I had a, a heart on. When I went to the car, I had a pair of shorts on. There was a heart on. The first words your mother said to me before I or before I love you or before, you know, <laughs> So, uh, even my name was, is that a hard on? Yes. Yes, son. Yes, son. It was. It was a hard on. And I go, okay. She chipped her tooth that night. Where do I go? <laughs> Which way is yours? And she didn't jump back in the car. It was not out of excitement. She was like, all right, so which house is yours? She came right to my front door, bro. Right to my front door. We watched Friends and we sit, we shared two MGDs. It was my buddy's place. I was cat sitting for him because he was out of town. So we banged in his bed. Oh my God. We banged in a stranger's bed. This is not respectful. Yeah, I'm just, I know this is what I'm going to tell my son. Okay, this but is what I'm going to tell my son when he he'll comes to age. You down. He's going to sit down and I'm going to tell him it's how, how romantic it was. It was beautiful. It was it was I had a hard on in basketball shorts. It was a stranger's house. We shared an MGD and we did not have SEX until after midnight. So you're right. It was the second day. It was the first night we met cuz we were already established. Thank you. We've been talking we've for months. We've already established that we've already been talking so for a long time. So you can't tell your son that it was the first day we met. Have some respect for my dad and say, two months in, after courting you. Your father's, he's we not were, here. You could still respect him. I, I, and listen, by the nobody way, respected your father more than me. I carried the guy from room to room when he was, by the way, he was sick. By the way, at all times, you can say... That it was like the Renaissance. It period. was. It was like a hallmark. Card. We were. We had to send the letters via horse and carriage. Yeah. Just like in the Jane Austen yeah, novel. This one would have been in penthouse form. You just don't want to work with me. I'm working you with you, babe. You just don't want to be I'm, nice. Listen, I'm married to you, honey. I'm like you're my wife. I'm happy you let your inhibitions go that night. I'm happy you went to Chaconis and you left there saying, you know what, Mama needs some dick. I'm thrilled. We maybe were intimate until dawn and maybe I did go home in an Uber around 8 30 a.m and maybe it was a little bit of a walk of shame situation more like walk funny of shame you were walking funny by I ghosted your ass <laughs> for like two weeks oh man that's right and I started that's okay. going out of town. <laughs> you know in life I'm not really curious about a lot of things but I am really curious about what it's like to date in today's day and age you want to go back out there you want to hit the market again I want to yeah I do I want to actually set up a Finder. What Finder? A fake Tinder. Oh. Or like a Faya. I don't really, I honestly, I think Raya is very. But don't you need douchey. to have. Don't you need to have. Um, like you're not going to meet a real person on Raya. I feel like you're going to meet a player. You're going to meet somebody who's about like. What's Raya? The, Raya is the douchebag dating app. I think that's the one that everyone is very superficial and they have to make sure that they take a picture of every tarmac that they are standing on and those are their profile pictures and they're probably going to like break up with you and ghost you and have a roster and like they're Peter Panners and most of my friends are on Hinge. What's Hinge? We are talking about Hinge. I heard you the first time. I don't know what Hinge <laughs> means. <laughs> it's one of the big ones. Well, that's what she said, but I don't... Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. One of the big ones. I know Tinder. I've heard of Bumble. Okay. The Raya one. I didn't know the name, but I know what you're talking about. Uh, Plenty of Fish, I believe I've heard of. Coffee Meets Bagel. Coffee Meets Bagel is one that you've told me about, but I don't, Those I've sound never to heard me that. very like broke ass. I feel like people that are like, okay, can we just have a bagel? Like the name Coffee Meets Bagel suggest like i only have a dollar it's, we're not gonna have fun. not even that <laughs> to me it's it's more we're not gonna have fun you and know I'm what i mean it's sober. like every no it's just so let's it, make it tea herbal and like 99 cents or less and let's do it at like 8 a.m yeah oodles and noodles on and saturday oodles and noodles and quarter drinks <laughs> coffee <laughs> meets bagel their competition could be like top ramen and netflix yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what i think no it. netflix has the monthly subscription i think it would be top ramen yeah. and Blockbuster. Yeah. yeah, I. Um, <laughs> Am so I funny? I, I, but I, I, I don't Am understand. Am I funny? You sound like you're trying too hard. But I wasn't. It was all spontaneous. Well, you're hilarious. I'm thoughts. sorry, baby. You're the funniest person I've ever. Oh, met. you have a thing where you have to be the funniest guy in the room, and no one else. Can be I, I don't funny have a thing. You? It's the thing. 
I don't have a thing. That's usually how it plays out. But it sounds um, like you're basically saying, I don't have a thing. It's my one and only thing is to be funny. You have a lot more to offer than I that. Didn't, I didn't say any of that. You just said Do that. Do you want to rewind Thank it? you for the encouragement. I appreciate that, uh, you know, you've... Uh, narrow me down to one thing. I didn't say that. I just said that if I walk into the room, chances are I'm the funniest person in that room. You guys, you it's know just... what he says? He goes, I'm like the weekend. Everybody looks forward to me coming and everyone... You just okay, you could it. say it. You could say it. I'm As... like the weekend. Everybody looks forward to seeing me. And then when it's over, they all say, wow, that went by too fast. Anyway, let's get on track. You just got very, very far off track. Choo -choo. Um, Getting on the choo-choo train. Yeah, I don't know any of the the apps. For us girls, it's totally different. I just know that even though I was very nervous, I was still excited. The fact is now we're all on our phones all the time. And isn't this how everyone meets people? Everybody has these phones in their pockets, you know, now. We're on our phones way too much. Therefore, we're definitely finding everyone that we meet the same way. You have to have a playbook for how to date online. So like our advice, since we are a success story, you know, for you guys listening who are on these apps, make sure that your profile is on point. You have to make sure your pictures are good, not too, you know, sending too much the wrong message. Don't be like on top of hang gliding, pretending like you're an adrenaline junkie. And then your caption is really important. I'll just teach you how to close. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen... Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> the straight line method of sales, where the, the reason that there's a straight line is because they're trying to get the prospective customer to go in a straight line. I'm going to ask you a question, then I, then I know I'm going to get the answer that I want from it. And I could give you a straight line method of closing on Tinder or any of those apps. Right off the bat, when you connect, the first one is great mind, swipe alike. She's going to say, ha, ha, he, he, whatever. Okay, so that's number one. The next thing you're going to tell them is, so we obviously both have great taste. They're going to say, ha, 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 ha. Then you're going to tell them, I think you're very pretty. They're going to say, well, thank you. You're going to tell them, don't thank me. Thank your parents. That's already three exchanges. That's like an eternity. But you got three yeses. You got three yeses. Anybody who's ever done sales before, especially in type of phone sales, your objective is to get three yeses. Once you get three yeses from the person that you're talking to on the phone, psychologically, this is all stuff that you could read books about and see that it's not just me yapping about it. It's stuff that's out there and it's taught. So you're trying to get three yeses. Right now, psychologically, with this girl, I got really a fourth yes because we already agreed that we like each other. We got, we've already matched in the looks department. So I've got now another three yeses. She's mine. If I want to go on a date with this girl, I can Without a doubt. I'm not saying that we're humping. I'm not saying that, you know, she's going to, she wants to marry me. I'm not saying, I'm saying that, again, the objective, these are dating apps. So if the objective okay. is to get a date. I get it. You got a date. All right. So. TM, trademark. Like I should sell that. I should sell a PowerPoint presentation on that because there, there are guys out there right now doing push-ups, taking pictures of them, like a topless photo in the bathroom. You look like an idiot. You look like a jerk-off, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like I agree. You, you look real stupid. I promise you, if you follow the, just those quick little tips I just gave you, you just hit them with those four questions. You could put your shirt back on. You know, you get out of the bathroom. You can meet them in like a restaurant. You don't have to flex for them. Your bed will be plentiful. Do you know why I don't like a guy that's making that flex on his profile picture because he comes off like it's all about him. Yeah, that that's what Matt is. If that your picture just... is you showing me what you can do, it's not showing me that you're going to be into me at all. You're going to be so into yourself that you're not going to be a good listener. You're not going to be a good boyfriend. You're not going to be good in bed because if your first impression is let me choose me, 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 then I'll just take off my shirt and do like push-ups, like turn off but to me it just says that i don't really have anything else to talk to you about but look at my Offer. abs but now listen there are girls out there that sometimes they just want that uh they want to get pounded by some guy that you know has a six-pack 
Layla girl. Yeah, Layla. For Layla would be a perfect example of someone who would like to get her back split by a guy who has, you know, a six pack and big biceps. Layla would definitely be swiping on all the push up photos. Yeah, so this it, it takes all kinds to make a world. But I'm telling you, what did you push just say? up it, it makes... takes all kinds to make a world. You ever heard kinds. that before? All kinds. Got it. But push-ups, no push-ups, whatever your profile is, if you use my four questions, you don't have to do anything else. You're good. You're golden. I can't stress this to you enough. Write down what I said. Write wound? Write wound. Write wound. Write wound. <laughs> Write down. Tattoo it on your arm. Do whatever you got to do. But remember what I just told you, fellas. I promise you. I, I couldn't do it. I met this broad. She hemmed me up, and now I, I got a kid. I couldn't really reap the benefits of it. I'm telling you, for, I just want one guy to reach out and say, Tommy, I, I took your advice. I used those questions, and my dick has arthritis now. It, it, it doesn't, it, it, I, can't, I, can't walk, I can't walk anymore. That's what I want for anyone out there. Can your dick do push-ups? It will be able to. After you listened and used those four questions, a million percent. That's pretty much my synopsis and my overall viewpoint of everything to do with online dating. Master those four questions, fellas. Cut it out. Just being real, man. Just being real. Well, listen, my friends today and our listeners and our IG friends, they have written us questions and we're going to read them right now. Okay. But first, ladies, your dating profile absolutely has to have this on it. Okay. Number one, if you're looking for casual sexual encounters, go wild on the thought shots, the Tatiana, you know, thirst trap shots. But if you're looking for something more serious, let your mom pick the photos. Let your single hot guy friends pick the photos. I promise you their egos are not invested in your profile just like yours is. And also, last thing, be honest in your profile. Own who you are. I promise you that if you're looking for a sugar daddy, you're better off letting them know. If they're on the other hand, you want to be the sugar mama, let the fella know. And guys, by the way, my mom always says the minute they start catching feelings, they start to lie because they want to cover their ass and not do or say something that's going to turn you off. I actually think that's pretty sound advice when it comes to the online dating because it's pretty seductive to think that you could, you really could be anybody you want to be before you meet them. Because they don't know you, the more often than not, they don't really have any relationship with anybody you know. So you could kind of just make stuff up. But it's really not the right approach to take because they're automatically going to be on guard. You know, even after you meet and you hang out a few times, even if you have a good rapport and you've had fun, and you've, they're still automatically going to be suspect because they don't really know you. So it's just better if you really like someone to me. I think honesty is always going to, you know, be the best policy, especially because I think that there's a misconception that, you know, you could kind of be, you know, show your, picture, your buddy's G-Wagon and, and you're driving in the driver's seat. There's a lot of that that goes on. And I just think it's stupid. It's always going to come back to only bad can happen from it. You know, the girl that's going to fuck you solely because you're in the driver's seat of a G-Wagon. Because it's not yours, it's your friend. So it's like, even when she meets you, she's going to fuck you, know that you... Where's the G-Wagon? Oh, I don't have it, it's my buddy. So that's not going to last long, you know what I mean? So, you know, you're only going to get put in a bad spot because, God forbid, you meet someone that you like. And uh, now you got to be honest and, you know, and uh, I, I just think it's a bad place to start. We meet somebody and we think we're getting to know them and all these variables can come out of the woodwork, even... If the car and the person looks good on the outside, on paper, there are all these wild cards that come out of nowhere, like getting ghosted and not knowing like how everything seemed like you guys were so perfect for each other. And then one of you dips. That's probably because of dishonesty. That's what I'm talking about right there. When it's like, wow, I thought we really had a good date. I thought that there, things really went well. How come, you know, she never called me back or how come he never called me back? I think nine out of 10 times when you're talking online dating, it's because people weren't honest and now their cards are going to be pulled. Um, 
Should we make a rule for everyone to limit their dates to no more than three drinks? We're making rules now. One of our IG friends wrote in and asked, should I stop drinking so much on my dates? She thinks that they had a great time, but she's not hearing from a lot of guys afterwards because I think it's that she's drinking more than she realizes her behavior. If you have like one or two over the course of like four hours, you're just going to be jovial and it's just a libation. But if I have one too many drinks, I might not notice that I was becoming a little sloppy and then less polished. Or you always tell me that you can tell if I've drank too much because I'll become a bitch to yes, you. Yes, she gets very so, bitchy, very bitchy. They might not be able to recognize their bad habits when they start drinking a little too much. But I also think from a guy's perspective, that's a real fun time. And he might call her again for a real fun time. But if you're looking to date that guy, I just don't really see like that guy saying, you know, after he wakes up with the hangover and whatever, looking to go on dates now with you. I think you start from a bad position if that's where you start. I, I don't know where you go from there. So for the person who wrote in, should I drink less? If you're asking, if that's a question that you're asking, should I probably have less drinks? Yeah. I do think if you like the guy, do curtail your alcohol intake so that you have full control. I'm just going to read one more question. How do you protect yourself from getting catfished? A, that's why Hinge is good because it shows you the people that you have in common. And B, life is a big question mark and you just have to be willing to roll the dice. Don't overinvest on your first date. Wait until you meet. You could do a FaceTime, you guys. What we did was is probably the opposite of what you would do because my wife would have every reason to think that she might be being catfished. She's on a television show. You know, because I don't think there's you know, really anything you could do if you get catfished. That's just like, what are you going to do? But to eliminate that from happening, you got to get out in front of that early. So if you're talking with someone, it's kind of like, all right, let's get together, put a face to the voice type of thing. If they don't want to do that, then, you know, that might raise a red flag. We're wrapping this up with the following. When you meet someone that you like and you have connected and then you have some chemistry on text, the very next thing to do is to FaceTime. Let's FaceTime tonight at 7 p.m. I have about 15 minutes before my mom comes, something make up an excuse so that you create a small window so that they know in advance this is only going to be a 10-minute max call. So they won't be like, oh, they we didn't talk for very long. No, no, no. You manage the expectation at the top of the Oh, no, and if it goes thing. over, it goes over. That's a good thing, but I get what you're but saying. But just say, hey, I've got about five minutes tonight at 7 Thought it would be cool if we got some FaceTime. And everybody knows it's for the chemistry. We're FaceTiming to hear each other's voices to make sure you're not getting catfished. Meow. That's catfish. Is it? Yeah. You should probably keep that to yourself. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to the very first episode of Tilt the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We appreciate you guys so much. And that's why if you like, subscribe, download, and comment, it'll help us with our numbers. And we want to get those ratings up high. We'll see you guys next week. Looking forward to it. Love you. So much. Seriously, I do. I love him more. No, seriously, I love you. No, I love Shut you. Up.